Hey guys, uh, I just finished my cardio session and I wanted to answer the question how I, the hell did I learn to actually enjoy my cardio session as a lazy software engineer. So, like, you know, just a little background. Like, when I first started as, you know, when I used to work in my old employer in Garrison Technologies, they gave you free food, free alcohol, and amazing social, amazing socials. You know, you get, you get, you, they pay for your lunch, you know, they... They do whatever, and essentially you get fat and comfortable, and you know anything. To, to uh, you don't have to think about food, you don't have to think about your comfort because, you know, you just have to think about your problem, and they give you everything else. If you're hungry, if you need a snack, go get it. If you need a fruit, go get it. It's not. It's not like they don't have healthy options. You know, Google does a thing where they like hide the snacks in a corner so that people eat fruits first. But you know, things are free and for my money mindset, when things are free, I'm not trading off my health. I always see that as the more easier benefit. So then when I, you know, essentially I got fat and I think by the peak of my weight, I was 95 kilos. And actually when I was um, uh, my peak, so I quit my job around August 31st, that's a pretty exact. And I was about 95. And then in December 31st, I was actually 98. So I was really, really heavy then. But actually I learned some disciplines when um, I was in my work. And what the dif key difference here was, um, it's actually, you know, it's not like I didn't try to do exercise. I tried to go to the gym. I tried to go to, um, I tried to lift the weight. My brother taught me how to do bench, how to do deadlift, how to do squats. And I got good. But one thing I never really resonated with, now this might be, you know, if you do it properly, obviously this is different. But for me, when I didn't go to the gym for a long session and I got fatter, so because I eat by default, really. so I know some people have the other way problem, but for me, eating is easy. So, and eating less is hard. So for me, I just got bigger. So when I went to the gym, even though, you know, let's just say I'm doing a bench, I'm doing a 60 kilo bench, I would, it was easier because I was heavier. So I was rewarded by the fact that I was heavy because my metric was just how heavy can I bench? And obviously that's not a good met metric to have and blah, 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 we we'll get to that detail. But what I'm trying to say is I did some exercise, I did some bouldering, I did some, all this other stuff and I didn't know what you know, worked for me because I knew I had to do some cardio because I could tell, you know, I couldn't even walk properly. I couldn't even, um, I, I, running something like the worst thing ever. So. I boil it down to what kind of cardio could I actually do? Now, I first had a belief that I need to conquer, which was I'm not a disciplined person. And my belief here was broken because of my friend. When I went to go out to start my own company, some my own thing, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about that in a second. And my friend basically said, Jinte, you're one of the most disciplined people that I know. So um, if you, if, if anyone can do it, you can. And I was just like, eh? Because, you know, with all my gym not going, I'm paying for like 90 quid a month for a gym membership. And I'm still not going. The accountability is not there. Maybe, you know, some people say, yeah, they spent 300 pounds on a PT or something. That might increase your accountability. And I, I have a feeling that I still wouldn't have gone. It was not the money problem. It was the fact there was too much friction and my belief to go to the gym. And I thought I was not a disciplined person because I was not looking after my mouth. I never thought health, I never saw that as a priority. And then this guy, my coworker, goes, I am, you are one of the most disciplined person I know. And I went, the fuck? I literally said, huh? Instead of going, I don't believe you, I decided to go, why do you think that? And in that, he told me, well, you know, let's talk about you as a software engineer who you're very hardworking and blah, 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 which we can talk about this. As a software engineer, do you think anyone can actually just sit here, solve problems for eight hours? That to us, as all the software engineers in the, in the round, is not normal. Ask any people that don't look at screens all day, which is rare because everyone looks at phones, but people that don't look at computers all day, they can't game or watch TV for more than three hours because their eyes start hurting. It is hard to sit down and be disciplined in your software engineer. He said, not only are you disciplined in your work and you can sit down and do your work, but you're also disciplined on your money. And I was like, what do you mean by money? And he goes, do you think it's easy to save your max ISA amount every year? And I was like, yes. And he goes, that's exactly why I think you're disciplined because you have systems in place to ensure, is essentially for me when I get paid, I just put a system in place to automatically take money out. And then I realized, oh, I'm disciplined in money, 
I'm disciplined at work because it's automatic. How can I make exercise, which is effort and work and discipline, to become automatic? Like a code, like, you know, I come from a testing background, so if, you know, if, if, all, if all I had to do was worry about features and never test, because it's all tested for you, amazing. So how can I make this exercise, which I need to do, automatic? So I started thinking myself as a little program. So I'm gonna start sharing some stuff that worked for me. But the first thing that worked for me is measure everything. Everything is good. So I had the Fitbit, which measured my resting heart rate and my sleep, which is another thing. Um, I also measured my step count, which is good. Um, just to get my list here. I, I also have a Renfo scale thing, which, you know, you go on Amazon and it measures your body fat, it measures your um, muscle percentage, your water retention, all this other data that's cool. But it's, the beauty is, is the friction is easy. You just step on the scale and it gives you all the data to sync to your phone. Brilliant. Now, the reason I knew that I need all of these metrics is because when I first learned how to do budgeting, I knew that, you know, just looking at the money number, I couldn't see a difference. And that's how lifestyle creep happens. People just see them and go, oh, I've got 6,000 pounds in my bank account. Of course, I have enough for a few drinks. Like, oh, whatever. But a few drinks end up being like three, 200, 300 pounds. Coupled that with every few weeks. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of money that you go down the drain. And so I needed a lot of data, lots of accurate data. Well, we can talk about accuracy in a second with weight. Because obviously... You know, if I eat something, I'm going to weigh more in the scales. So it's to be consistently inconsistent. So that's what my brother taught me, which is he's a very gym enthusiast. So it's be consistently inconsistent with the measurement of your health. Yes, my blood pressure could be really high. And because, you know, I started you know, exercising or eating junk or whatever. But we want to try and minimize the. So if the parameters for your inputs are time of the day, food that you eat, blah, blah, blah. We go to just choose a time. Like I choose waking up. I just get on my scales. I don't even look at the data. I'm just like, it's going to be stored there. I'll process the data later. It's not about looking at your bank account. Like if you're budgeting, if you're looking at your bank account all the time, that is not healthy. Same way, same, um, same goes for health. And notice that my discipline for money is now being transferred to health. And I'm trying to figure out how to make it automatic. Before we go to how I actually did exercise, how I created the discipline and automation to, for me to exercise, I need to talk about how you are disciplined in something. You have gotten here. You have lived here today. In something. To, for me, it was money management and, and being software. But it could be the fact that you play video games for 12 hours a day. That is not something that everyone can do. It could be the fact that you watch Netflix shows because it hooks you in for eight hours or you binge watch a TV show. It could be these negative things that you don't think that is discipline. But if you just say you're going to look at a box for eight hours... Wow, that takes a lot of discipline. So, first thing, I need to make it automatic. Second thing, I need passive data. I don't want to think about getting the data. I just want to get the data when I want to process it to ensure I'm going the right direction. Okay. So, I measured uh, heart rate, weight down, muscle up, step count. Um, I even noticed I my body it measures body fat, which is consistent, inconsistent, whatever. Um, and I also measured, oh, this is something else really nice. I measured my tape measure for like a month just to imp just to ensure I, I do this discipline. And I measured myself a tape measure and, you know, people, gym enthusiasts, I'm, I'm sure will go, oh, what the hell is the point of measuring your chest and belly and e arms every day? It's not going to change that much every day. But for me, it was like a routine to say, hey, I'm going to be more attuned to my body it's gonna be more aware of my body and if there's an automatic body measuring thing obviously i'll buy it but right now the fastest cheapest frugal way was to get a tape measure and spend a little bit of my time measuring it and actually it was a nice little morning routine where it made me more aware of my body like how often are you aware of your body as a software engineer do you notice you're hunching back probably not um so then once i've done that routine of getting all that data i I need to do something. I need to make sure I get the right direction. I need to improve anything. I have options. So we can talk about how we did that. I used Google Keep. Actually, I'm going to show you. F this. Right. Here you go. Right. Here you go. Share my screen. What I literally did was I went to Google Keep and I made a new note. 
and there's there are a few amazing functionality with Google Keep. So let's just say morning. So as you saw, I need to get on my scales, measure myself in my tape, measure myself in tape measure. And what else was there? There was uh, measure myself, tape measure, get on my scales, and uh, do cardio. Let's just do that. Let's just, let's just say that was the formula. So I try to do this every morning, right? The beauty of Google Keep, the, and the reason I chose Google Keep was because it first has a feature where, and I, I know Apple Notes has this, use whatever you want. It has a checkbox thing, which is really nice because you can start ticking stuff up once you've done it, which feels good. But what another thing that's really good is that the next day you can just press hide checkbox and then say keep, and then go back to here, whoops, and then go show checkbox again, and then boom, it's already, it's already you know got the routine for you so using this principle i then added tons and tons of routine to my system which is step you know, routine number one do this, do this my checklist grew and i did it to fill out my day and at lunchtime essentially and even had you, know, you can do more discipline to work and everything as well but for exercise i made sure i went for a walk because the only measurement that I could fix myself was walking. But then for me to make that automatic, there's something called dog sitting. And dog sitting in, it's like Airbnb for dogs. And there's an app called Rover and uh, Paw Shake, where I just signed up and we get dogs here now. And guess what? Dogs are here. And I now have a routine for the dogs. Because if I don't walk them at 12, they wreak havoc in the house. That's Increasing my accountability huge. That's not like, you know, money didn't do it for me when I, if they had a PTO with a gym membership, that was expensive. But dogs ruling the house, not behaving like that dog over there, you know, just nice and calm. Yeah, that really upped my thing. And I also got money. So I got money to go for a walk, which, you know, that actually was way huge incentive than anything I've ever done. Now, as the walking went up, actually my weight gained it. Now that's a diet thing, right? Um, so I went from 95 to 98. So it, um, even though I went for walks every lunchtime and increased my steps, got at least 10,000 steps, I was still gaining weight. And that's because of the amount of food I was eating and the habits I was instilling in there. But my step count was going up, which means my general heart health was increasing. And so with that, I, always, I thought about what I really liked doing as a kid. Now, I like bouldering. I like... I do, I don't mind yoga, I'm not very good at stretches, but I like moving my body in space. I never, I don't really resonate with um, uh, going to the gym to just lift you know, bar weights. I like being able to do stuff with my body. Like one of my goals, maybe in my future is go surfing. Yeah, I'd like to have a good call and be able to move my body in space so I can do surfing. And that's same with bouldering, same with, um, uh, playing badminton or boxing, whatever, right? So the most logical thing for me there was actually to do skipping. Now, skipping or jump rope or whatever you call it, from there I went, okay, what can I do? And I didn't know what I could do, and I just tried to skip for 30 seconds. So I skipped for 30 seconds, and it was the worst 30 seconds ever. It was the hardest 30 seconds I've ever done. And then I said, okay, Cool. So first of all, I have to automate it. So I bought it. I use an app called Hit. I'll show you in a second. I use an app which says gives you interval and blah blah blah. And it goes thirty seconds work and thirty seconds rest. And then that's a cycle. So I said, okay, then can I do that five times? So that's five minutes worth of exercise. And so I tried it, and I could. It was hard, but I could. And I was actually really excited just to do that skipping every morning because actually it was like, like I could see my dopamine go up and and when I say dopamine, I mean just my high. And because if I just show you on my phone now, one of the things in the, there we go. All you had to do, so you set the work number, you set the rest number and you set the interval. So for me to improve, all I had to do was either increase the work, decrease the rest even by a second and increase the interval. So intervals be the cycles, right? And it was just very, it was just very, it's very addictive. So if you're like in a video game, you have a skill rating or whatever, yeah? In this case, this was my skill rating. I just need to make sure the work increases, my rest decreases, 
and my intervals increase. And I built up a tolerance where I can go for 30 seconds skipping to 30 seconds rest. And I can do that for an hour. Now you might be going, how the freak did you do for an hour? Well, I stopped, started doing things that was automatic. I started putting my headset on and play YouTube videos or audiobooks or podcasts or anything that you just want to learn or interested in while I was skipping. So I could hear the, oh, start. And I'm like, okay, I'll start now. And I'll just rest and I'll just, you know, listen, listen to my podcast or audio book or whatever. And that gave my skipping experience very enjoyable. So in the morning I skip and because of the dogs at lunchtime, I go for a walk. And that is cardio. That is improving your health. And right now today, and the reason I made this video is I, I reached a new milestone. Where I'm still skipping for an hour, but I skipped continuous for two minutes and rested for two minutes. And did that 15 times, so that makes an hour. Now, you might be like, oh, the rest is too much, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, do, yeah okay, I'll reduce my rest later. Right now, I'm trying to get my increased intensity of my skipping, the duration of my skipping per interval higher. And that's the game that I played in my head. And so once you can gamify, or and, and you can only gamify once you have the metrics. And so, yeah, off, like, going back to the things I used to measure, did my belly get smaller? Yes. Did my weight go down? Yes. Did, um... Did, uh, what was it? The step count go up? Yes, because the skipping, goes, that, that, was, that was cheeky. So I was getting like 20K steps now, 16K to 20K based on, based on yeah, because that, that's a bit cheating now. But yeah, you, you're only cheating yourself at the end of the day, and you only want to be better than yourself, unless you're performing to be an athlete, which, you know, go go do that. I don't think you as a software engineer are planning to be an athlete anytime soon. You just want to be healthier. And so this is what worked for me. I automated... Um, the thinking behind exercise. I knew I was gonna skip. I knew I was gonna walk. And if I didn't do that, if I didn't, if I didn't walk, the dogs would go crazy. And if I didn't skip, um, I couldn't increase my SR like a video game. And so I knew that I was gonna skip, and I knew, I, and and I don't even have to use a stopwatch or anything. The, the app does it. It's just thirty second skip, thirty second rest. And it, it goes three, two, one, go, three, two, one, stop. And, you know, just does it does all the thinking for me. So that I can, I sometimes even reply to emails when I'm skipping. Like, oh, 30, I've got 30 seconds to reply to that email. And some of the best thinking, best ideas that I came up with was while skipping, listening to a podcast and, you know, breathing, essentially. So actually, because I've got this incentive now where the best ideas, best, this, this YouTube video came because I was skipping. And I was like, you know what, I'd like to talk about my journey of skipping and how I have overcome this in the last three months. So right now I'm 90 kilos, which you know I've lost eight kilos from December, or five kilos from when I left work. Um, different time scales, yeah. And I, you know, I had to run for a train the other day, and yeah, it was, running was a lot easier. And you don't know the you know, compounding effects and the benefits into the future, but you have to make the skipping and exercise automatic. And there was so much friction because I was like, I had to make a plan. I don't know what to do. All this stuff. Leverage some things to make it easy. So my to-do list to measure everything was already written down like a cycle of automatic and it appeared automatically. Like, you know, people like journaling, like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, this. Yeah, but that's very analog in the sense of it's nothing wrong with analog. Like, I still use analog, like here, and I've got a notebook and blah, blah, blah. But like, if I need to make it repeatable, and like routine and come every day, yeah, use some digital stuff. And you know, Google Keep has the benefit of putting, uh, I'm talking about Google Keep now, and I can have a whole conversation about Google Keep and how it's changed my life. Ooh, um, but that's not the video today. So yeah, I learned to love exercise because I learned to automate it. And I automated by learning to not to think about what to do and just do what it says, like a program. So I made a program, well, I wonder why it's called a program now, and I did the motion like a computer. Now, I listen to my body based on the data. If I'm not going in the direction, if, if I'm hurt, if I'm injured, I might lower the intensity because I now know how to do it. I know the levers. And if I were to increase it because it's too easy, I increase it. And I, I know this because it also says at the end of the workout, how hard did you find it? It's very easy, easy, hard, or whatever. And if I had too many hards, I should lower it. But if I had too many easies, I should increase it. And then after that, it just becomes a game. You just keep increasing those metrics. Cool, hope that helped you guys.